Morning, everybody. Welcome out to our service. We're going to worship God. Welcome on the live stream. We're going to see one more. Bring the live down to your feet. Let's all stand as well.
bread upon me self speaks righteousness for me and stands in my defense. Jesus saves your blood. What to wash my innocence?
Thank you, Lord God. Let's give a clap offering. Worthy Jesus, worthy, worthy God. to have his way in our heart this morning. Number one. Number two, maybe there's somebody that you would pray for this morning, encourage you to do that. We want to pray uh, Pastor Gibson, Evangelist Rod Gibson in Caboolture this morning, the grace of God upon that work. We want to pray for the Bustleton congregation, Pastor Farrell. Uh, there's a wedding there today in the church, praise God. And uh, there'll be people there, family, extended family, get to hear the gospel. It's a great opportunity. I want to pray for our baby churches in Hornsby and in Poland. I want to pray also for the Manukau Church this morning. God just to have his way there. A couple of situations. I want to lift them, lift Pastor Jay, God's hand upon their services today. And uh, it's the Christmas season, end of year season. I want to pray for opportunity for the gospel, the outreaches that we're going to do, the personal witness that we have. Let's take time and pray. Let's believe God together for good things today. I'm going to get Stu to open us in a word of prayer in just a moment. Let's do that, Father. We pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, God. Lord, thank you, God, for our church, for our fellowship. God, we thank you, God, for good things happening all around the place, God, all around the world, Lord God. We're lifting up the McLean's in Poland, Lord. The Reddings on Hornsby, God. The work in Manico, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Lord, we're going to to encourage one another as we greet each other. Welcome you out if you tune in on uh, line. God bless you. We appreciate having you with us this morning. God's going to speak to you as well. We welcome you out this morning. Praise God. There's a, uh, a men's discipleship meeting tomorrow night. That's for the men. A men's discipleship meeting on tomorrow night with uh, Pastor Ben Reddy from the Hallsby Church. It's going to be a good scene. Some of the uh, Hornsby guys are going to come up. There'll be some food here available. If you uh, need to come straight from work, don't worry. You're not going to starve. We'll help you out there. And uh, and then there'll be some spiritual food yes. through the Word of God as uh, Pastor Reddy challenges us with the Word of God tomorrow night. Men's discipleship. Half our six are buildings open for prayer. And then not long after, for uh, we'll open up for some food. Um, at 7.30, the meeting begins tomorrow night. 7.30. Men's Discipleship Meeting with uh, Pastor Ben Reddy. Friday night, Christmas Outreach at 7pm. Christmas Outreach this Friday night. We've got Christmas flyers there, but we've also got some flyers there for the uh, Money Outreach, which is on next Saturday at 2 o'clock, and so we can hand them out to people if uh, people are open to that. Invite them to come out for the very next day for that. Give out some church flyers, some Christmas flyers, whatever. Um, if we're able to, we'll take the band out. We're going to go down to Hamilton or maybe down to the uh, to the foreshore or something like that, the beach, wherever the uh, the people are um, at 7 p.m. 
this Friday night coming in. Encourage you to come out, join with us, take a, a few moments to talk to people. What a season, what an opportunity to tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. It's Christmas, the reason for the season. And I don't believe it's Jesus' birthday uh, on the 25th of uh, December. Sorry, that uh, blows your bubble. But uh, uh, who cares when his birthday was? We celebrate him every day of the year. Yes. But it's an opportunity where our society, our culture does celebrate Jesus. He's the reason for the season. And we want to take that opportunity to bring Jesus to people that maybe don't know him. And uh, that's a great opportunity for us. We're going to take an offering this morning. I want to encourage you in generosity. I want to encourage you in giving to the work of God. I want to encourage you. There's needs in Poland. There's uh, just greater needs ongoingly. There's needs in other places. And so if you're able to contribute, if you're able to give to the work of God this morning, God will see that and God will bless that. We appreciate that. If you tune in online, the same. The details will come up for you. Praise God. We're going to get Ben to pray over this offering this morning. Thanks, Ben. Lord God, we thank you for the privilege of giving into your kingdom, Lord God. As we do that, I pray that you will bless the heart of every gift and giver. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thanks, Brian. Praise God. Isn't God good this morning? Yes. Thank God that we can be saved and have a, our name written in heaven and have a place. That Jesus has prepared for us and uh, I thank God for all that he prepares and all that he has for us in this life and all that he has for us this week and this month and this year to come uh, but thank God for heaven thank God for that we want to look at uh, the word of God this morning Proverbs chapter 20 you've got a Bible Proverbs chapter 20 and uh, a store owner interviewed a young man for a job and he asked the young man, he said, if I hire you to work in my store, will you be honest and truthful? And the young man surprised him with his answer. The young man answered, I'll be honest and truthful whether you hire me or not. And he's speaking about his own personal integrity. He was talking about the fact that he's the real deal, the fact that he's not interested in anything but honesty and truth. And so I want to minister this morning a, a sermon I've entitled Living a Life of Integrity. And uh, I could give you examples of people that I've known over 30 years that have for 30 years consistently lived a life of honesty and truthfulness and integrity. And I want to stir you about that tonight, that this is a valuable, valuable commodity in God's eyes, that you and I would be people of integrity. Proverbs 20, verse 7, the Bible says the righteous man, you could say the righteous woman as well, the righteous man walks in his integrity. That's how he lives. That's his life. That's his walk with God and with man. He walks in his integrity. And it says this, his children are blessed after him. There's a blessing, a generational blessing that comes through living a life of integrity. And so I want to look with you for a moment this morning at integrity versus duplicity. Integrity versus duplicity. Very clear opposites in their um, intention and in the meaning of these two words. Integrity is the quality of being honest and having strong moral principles or the state of being whole and undivided. One man said integrity is a high standard of living based on a personal code of morality that doesn't succumb to the whim of the moment or the dictates of the majority. Integrity means a person has a moral compass that doesn't waver. And so I've read stories about people, and I won't belabor the point, but people in the the South Pole or the North Pole, and we understand that compasses are affected by the poles. People that have been climbing Mount Everest or various places in snowstorms where a compass is your only uh, standard of reference, your only way to know which way to go. And who knows that you want your compass to point in the right direction. Yes. And uh, this definition that we just read about integrity talks about a person's got a moral compass. They know which direction is the right direction morally. They know which is the right direction with regard to how they behave in certain circumstances and it doesn't waver. You ever had a compass and it starts to go round and round and it starts to wobble? I had a compass when I was a kid once and I was really excited and I was out exploring the backyard because that was, you know, my world. I wasn't at the North Pole yet. But, uh, and I uh, had this compass and I, you know, dropped it obviously. If you didn't, and, and then at one point I picked up my compass and the, and the needle had fallen off and it was just loose in the, you know, trying to get it to work and it just didn't come good. 
And uh, so it's completely useless. And some people, their moral compass is broken and they're affected by their feelings. Uh, they're affected by other people's opinions or what they're taught by the world. And uh, they don't know what's right and what's wrong and they lack integrity. Who's ever met someone that lacks integrity? comes to light often politicians and stories about politicians that lacked integrity in public office. And so integrity comes from the word integer. It means single, it means one, it means not double, it means pure and not mixed. It's, it's, it's a singularity. It's, it's like you know what you've got there. There's no question about this. It's just integrity. Duplicity comes from a Latin word meaning double. Its original meaning in English has to do with a kind of deception in which you intentionally hide your true feelings or intentions behind false words or actions. We've all heard the story or, or the expression that somebody's living a double life. They're duplicitous. In Deuteronomy 25, 13 and 14, the, um, the, the scripture says this, you shall not have in your bag differing weights they're heavy and a light you shall not have in your house differing measures a large and small and it's talking about trade between people it's talking about someone that sells things and weighs out a certain it might be a uh, you know somebody selling some grain it might be someone selling some apples or you know someone's got measurements and they're charging by the measure and uh, it says you're not to have differing weights. You're not to have two different weights. You need to have one weight and it's a correct weight. That's the only weight that you need. And it describes somebody who lives life with double standards. And uh, they carry a bag with differing measures. Sometimes, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, as they move around, that's what the bag represents. They're carrying their weights or their measure around with them, dealing with the public, dealing with other people, or they're at home. And they have different, uh, you know, scale of uh, measures of things when they're at home. Double standards. I had a mate years ago and he was a bit of a drug dealer and he had correct weights. I knew he had correct weights. I'd been with him. And when he would buy drugs, he'd weigh out using the correct weights to make sure that he got the correct amount of drugs for his money. That's how he worked. Um, but the thing was is that he had, when he was being a seller, when he would resell the drugs, he had some filed down weights. He had some weights that said one gram or five grams or ten grams, but there was a little bit filed off them, so they only weighed nine grams or four grams or three quarters of a gram. And what he was doing was simply, they were under and he was ripping people off. These weights were shaved. He had different weights in his bag. He had one weight for when he bought and one weight for when he sold. And, uh, and, and if you're his mate, he might use the correct weight for you. Or... You would carry your own weights because you didn't trust anybody and their weights because you know that people can be duplicitous. And, uh, you know, the problem of the person with different weights and measures is that it's one standard or one weight or one measure for themselves and another one for everybody else. And that's the classic definition of what a hypocrite is. Textbook def definition. One standard for me and then there's another standard for you. My expectation of you is higher than my expectation of me. And someone who walks in his integrity is the opposite of someone is, who is duplicitous or who is a hypocrite. And the Bible is very clear about what God says is important and what God says brings favour and blessing to life. So we're talking about the issue of duplicity, which takes many forms. And one form, if you like, is in our thoughts. In, in other words, you think one way, but you act another way. You act outwardly because people are there, but you think something differently. Maybe scheming is a word that comes to mind. In our words, you say one thing, but you think something differently or mean something differently, or you know it's not the truth and you're still prepared to say it. And one man said duplicity involves deceiving someone into believing something that isn't true whether it's about you, whether it's about something that you're selling or something that you're involved in. And the question I have this morning, am I? Are you living life with different weights and different standards, one for you and one for everybody else? 
Proverbs 20, verse 6 and 7, most men will proclaim each his own goodness. In other words, my, my weights are correct. My measures are correct. I have integrity and I don't do this and don't do that. But it goes on immediately in that verse and says, but who can find a faithful man? And then verse 7 is our text, the very next verse. It says, the righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. They're not getting a mixed message. They're not being confused by dad saying one thing or doing something. For example, going to church and doing this and doing that. And then he's a different man in business. He's a different man with the, the neighbours or he's a different man with the, uh, the relatives or he's a different man in different circumstances. And that's confusing the kids. And there was times my kids would say to me, they'd say, Dad, aren't you being a hypocrite? Which I used to really just not like that. Um, however, I was actually, I was up for that. And I never got heavy on my kids for saying that. And sometimes I had a valid reason was able to explain things. Other times I just had to repent and own it. I go, yeah, you're right. I'm expecting of you or I'm saying do this, but I'm doing that. And uh, I need to be a man of integrity. I need to be someone who my kids can reference off. I need to be someone who people can trust. I need to be someone who God will say, there's a faithful man in whom there's no guile. And so let's consider this morning the blessing of integrity. God's into integrity. God's just into it. And God sees someone who's the real deal. Someone who's not living a double standard or a double life. And God's really into it. Job 8 verse 20. God will not reject a man of integrity, nor will he support the evildoers. So the Bible says if you're evil, God's going to be against you. And if you have integrity, if you're the real deal, God will be for you. Proverbs 11. 1 says the Lord detests the use of dishonest scales, but he delights in accurate weights. Here's someone who's just honest in their business dealing. Here's someone who's just honest in their standards that they apply to life. And he says, God delights in, in that. God delights in you. God sees that and God's quite chuffed by that sort of stuff. He delights in honest scales. And as I said already, it, it, the, the text tells us if we will walk in integrity, it brings a generational blessing. It'll be something that can be handed down for good. One Bible commentator said integrity is important. God places a very high value on integrity. No one accidentally lives a life of integrity. It must be taught, practised and contended for. That's what this sermon's about this morning. Some teaching to help us. We need to, and, and it's our call individually to practise integrity and to contend for integrity because it will be challenged. Proverbs 28, 6 says, Better the poor who walks in his integrity than he who is crooked, though he be rich. The Bible says, look, if you, if you get crooked, if you, if you get rich rather by, by doing the wrong thing, by scamming, by lying, by questionable business practices, God says that that's, that's not as good as someone who's actually just struggling with poverty, but they have integrity in their life. God says integrity is more valuable than being rich. Most people would pick the riches, wouldn't they? There's a lot of people, they've sold out for money and they want money, they want riches, but they've sold their integrity to get it. And the Bible says, bad value system. 1 Chronicles 29, 17, I know, my God, that you examine our hearts and rejoice when you find integrity there. Again, God is rejoicing when he finds integrity. Integrity is one of the things that pleases God. It simply means you can trust on me, you can count on me, I'll keep my word, I'll be true. That means I am not for sale at any price. The Bible says to buy the truth and sell it not. Don't sell out. Don't sell out on the truth. Don't allow duplicity to creep into your life. And so God blesses integrity integrity provides protection proverbs 25 21 may integrity and uprightness protect me and there's a confidence that we have with god when we're walking and living righteously when we're not doing the wrong thing by anyone we know the apostle paul he'd spent x number of years in the church and uh, he's going to move on from 
uh, Ephesus and he says, look, uh, I haven't ripped anybody off. I haven't done anything uh, morally wrong towards any people in the congregation, financially or morally wrong. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm free of the blood of men. I, I, I've declared the truth. I've lived an exemplary life. And who accuses me of anything? No one could. And Paul had lived a, a life of integrity that God's favour was on Paul wherever he went because he was a man of integrity. And God uses the testimony of a man with integrity to reach far and wide, to continue to speak today. God's looking for people of integrity to make a big difference. And we have a, a world today where people laugh at being dishonest. People laugh at, you know, ripping off the boss or the tax office. People, you know, think it's a bit of a joke that people deceive other people or, or, or gossip or be unkind behind people's backs while at the same time saying hallelujah when, when we hear the word of God. And God wants to help us. And we understand that we're all a little bit, uh, you know, uh, uh, of a fallen nature. We have a fallen nature and we have a, a new nature and there's a battle going on, the old man and the, the new man, etc., etc. But God wants to help us by his spirit to walk a life that, that is controlled by the new nature, that is controlled by the spirit of God, that's taught by the Holy Spirit, that's in submission and obedience to the Holy Spirit, that we would live a life that people would have no doubt and no question about who we are and the fact that we're a genuine Christian. Integrity protects us many times from temptation. We all get tempted by many things. Joseph, Genesis 39, 6, Joseph was a very handsome and well-built young man. And Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully. Come sleep with me, she demanded, but Joseph refused. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. No one here has more authority than I do. He's held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. He's convicted that it's like this This would be wrong by my master. He's given me such trust. He's given me such authority here in this situation. That would be wrong against him. How could I do such a wicked thing against him and a wicked thing against God? Because God's favour is on my life and God's blessed me with good things and God's taught me what's right. How could I go against what I know is right by the Spirit of God in me? And how many, I, I thought about this, I thought how many young men would pass that test today in the world we live in today, even in the church, sadly, sometimes. Joseph's integrity protected him. Joseph's integrity called, meant that he was not for sale, meant that he couldn't be bribed, he couldn't be tempted with sin. I was reading an article, a, a newlywed couple had left a black zippered case on the roof of their car as they sped away from the reception to begin their honeymoon. And um, the case had all their wedding gift money in it, about 12000 bucks. And so they've got this gift and they're going on their honeymoon and they're married and they're moving forward and they're, their life's exciting now and they got $12,000 to, you know, buy whatever. And uh, by the time they reached their destination, it was gone left it on the roof of the car, <laughs> caught up by the beauty of his wife, I guess, and he's just put the, you know, the sachet of money on the roof and jumped in and sped off. And But two days later, David Yee uh, found the money and in spite of, listen to this, in spite of his mounting bills and jobless state, he didn't keep the money. Here's this young bloke, young guy, doesn't know the people, finds money. There's no ID there. It doesn't say this was from a wedding. This was from these people's, you know, uh, uh, wedding gift. It doesn't say anything. It's just money in, in, in a, a black sachet. And he finds it and he's got debts. And he finds it and he hasn't got a job. And some people say, beauty. Some people would justify it. Say, God's blessed me. But this, the, but this young guy, he's gone, someone's lost this. This is somebody else's money. This is not mine. And so he ended up, he handed it in. And, uh, you know, he returned the full amount and asked why he turned it in. He says, I guess it doesn't matter whether it's $50 or a 1000 or a million. It didn't belong to me. And so our integrity protects other people as well. 
how integrity makes a difference for somebody else. Who knows that couple would have been pretty stoked about that young man, the blessing of that. The righteous man walks in his integrity. Here's this young guy and he's got no job and he's got some debts and he's walking around and he finds money in a sachet on the ground and he just goes, I'm walking in integrity. That's not my money. I need to hand that in. I need to do the right thing. Thank God for people like that. Thank God for that sort of thing. And I've been blessed and privileged to know people for many, many years, many Christian brethren, many pastors, many people that I know, many people here this morning. There's integrity and there's an honesty and a genuineness in their faith and in their walk that I can rely upon. And, and it's like it's a safety for me as well as for them. And there's a blessing that you see upon their life. And there's a great joy involved. God's rejoicing and I'm rejoicing too when I see that. Thank God for people of integrity. I want to finish and, and speak for a minute. Thirdly, living a life of integrity and what can we do to live a life of integrity because I've hopefully painted it in a good light this morning and painted a good picture of integrity to the point that it was like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up for that, Pastor. And I got saved and I've, I've confessed and I've admitted that I, I didn't have a lot of integrity in some arenas. I didn't always tell the, the truth or do the right thing. There's a lot of things that I'm uh, you know, ashamed of. And, but I got saved and I began to see something different in some of the men in the church. I began to hear something different and read the scripture and find something different in the word of God. And it began to challenge and uh, cause me to say, yeah, that's what I'm going to aim for. That's, that's what I want. That's I don't want to be duplicitous. I don't want to be dishonest. I don't want to be a scammer or a hypocrite. I don't want to be any of those things that the world says is okay and even laughs about. And that was exactly where I was at. I want to be a person of integrity. And and what can I do to do that? What can we do to do that this morning? Number one is cultivate a love for it. And that's part of why I'm lifting it up this morning. God loves that we walk in integrity and, and we need to love walking in integrity and it's like I don't know about you but if I was that guy and I handed in that twelve thousand dollars I would I would feel pretty darn good about that. Missed out on the twelve but <laughs> I've maintained and walked in integrity. Thank God it's like thank God I, I just it's life's simple you just be honest life's simple you just do the right thing. Think about this you know Concerning Jesus, it was written in Psalms 45, 7, You loved righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore, your God has set you above your companions. This is our Lord and Saviour. Jesus is the standout. He's the, the greatest. And he walked in integrity because he loved righteousness. He loved what was right. He said, no, this is what's right. I'm not going to speak that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this and I'm going to speak this. And I'm going to honour the Father because my Father is watching. And Jesus loved righteousness. One man said, in order to walk in integrity, you must love it. A couple of quotes. We must never let others dictate what we do. To become a person of integrity, I must do what is right and refuse to be persuaded by others to do anything else. Sometimes you just got to say, get behind me, say it to people, don't you? It's, you know, it's like sometimes people offer, you should do this or you should say that. or It's like, no, that's, that's not right. Another quote, to be a person of integrity means you're willing to go against the crowd if the crowd is wrong. It means being willing to stand alone, if necessary, for what is right. And sometimes that'll be you and that'll be me. Sometimes, you know, in the, in the school, sometimes in, in the, the, the office, sometimes on the job site, sometimes, you know, uh, with extended family or whatever, sometimes we're the odd man out or the odd woman out, we're the odd person out because we need to stand alone on our integrity. We don't need to pick fights and correct everybody on everything. But there's times we need to stand up and we certainly don't need to be swayed by the opinions of other people and affected by that. So number one, cultivate a love for it, a love for integrity. Number two, associate with men and women of integrity. That's, that's something that's tremendously helped me. I thank God for the church. Church is God's idea. I thank God for the Potter's House Church because that's the church that God 
put me in and God put me in amongst these people and there were these men that I learned how to be uh, an, an honest person again. I learned how to be a righteous person. I learned how to be a, a, a righteous father and husband and learned, learned to be someone who was faithful and someone who was honest by mixing with these men who affected my life. And very quickly and very soon after becoming a Christian, I, I saw some men in the church and they weren't quite doing that. And not that I'm better than them or that I was looking down on them or I was condemning them. But very simply, I'm not going to associate or be affected or influenced by these guys. I'm going to be influenced and affected by these guys. Because these guys are doing what's right. These guys love righteousness. These guys are men of integrity. Uh, thank God that you've put me in amongst some men of integrity. And I thank God to this day. I, I know many, many, many men of integrity. There's men that I know I could ring them up and I could say, listen, here's my PIN number and here's my bank account details. Could you just keep an eye and just look after that for me? And I thought, oh, I'm not going to do it, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to give you remote access to my computer either. But, <laughs> but seriously, it's like I know men that I would trust these men. I, I would try, they've proven themselves time and time and time and again to be people of integrity. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. And the word fools, it's not just talking about IQ. It's not just talking about dummies. It's talking about people that have um, a foolish mentality or have a foolish morality. And the wise are people that are putting God's principles into place. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. And so without doubt, you know, Jesus is the supreme model of integrity. And I started going to church to learn how to hang out with Jesus. People tell me, yeah, man, I read the Bible every morning and I read some, some of the Gospels and, and, you know, I read the red, you know, which some Bibles have got Jesus' words in red and they, you know, they just want to hang out with Jesus. They just want to see what Jesus did and what Jesus said and Jesus talking about turning the other cheek and Jesus uh, not saying a word and Jesus uh, talking about forgiveness and all the different things that he taught. Jesus teaches us integrity by how he behaved, by what he spoke by what he did, by laying down his life, by his testimony and by his presence in our life. I began to learn the presence of Jesus in my life because it wasn't entirely automatic as a new Christian. I began to learn more and more and deeper and deeper how to hang out with Jesus and how to spend time with Jesus. And so for me, I'm never alone trying to walk in integrity. It's like Jesus is right there. And he helps me to make good decisions. Think about the Pharisees. We're talking about Jesus' enemies. They said, this teacher, we know you are a man of integrity. What do your enemies say? What do my enemies say? Do they see us as people that really are righteous and honest and genuine? They may not agree with us, but do they see us as being people of integrity? His pilot, when Jesus was being tried, I find no grounds for charging this man. Jesus was filled with integrity. In other words, his behaviour matched his belief, his walk, matched his talk, his character, matched his confession. Confession: Jesus was a man of complete integrity. And as I said, what do people say about you? The people you hang around with. Make friends with people of integrity. Spend some time with them. Come under their influence. Fellowship with men and women whose lives challenge you to pursue integrity. I thank God when I'm with someone who, it's, it's serious, I don't know about you, but it's like I feel like they're more righteous than me or something. It's like, man, I want to hang out with that guy. <coughs> There's something that, that they, it's like, I like that. Like the good spirit. Number three, seek the help of God through prayer. You can pray about this. Psalms 51, here's David. David was a man with a heart after God's own heart, but David's wheels fell off his car. David blew it. David made some foolish decisions. David was tempted and, and, uh, and messed up and uh, compromised a couple of situations and blew it badly at different points. But he says this in Psalms 51.10, Created me a pure heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 
And maybe repentance is needed in your life, even as I preach this this morning. Maybe there's small foxes or small decisions you've made to compromise or the temptations that have come or, uh, you know, your testimony isn't maybe entirely what you'd want it to be and you haven't always shown the integrity that you should. And maybe there's repentance that's needed today and you can ask God to cleanse you and help you to have integrity. Isn't that good news? God wants to help us. He doesn't just say, I like this, but you're on your own. It's like, no, he, he said, I'll be with you. I'll never leave or forsake you. And he works in us to do the will of the Father that we would be not duplicitous, but we would be in one accord with him and ourself. We'd not be in confusion. And the final one is number four. Apply God's word to your daily activities. James 1.22 says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. And so walking in integrity means integrating all of what God's word says into our daily activity. It means that I become a doer of the word of God, that God is molding me and fashioning me into righteousness. That's just doing the right thing. It's doing what's right. Psalms 15, 1 and 2, our Lord, who may abide in thy tent, who may dwell on thy holy hill, and who... Uh, the answer is he who walks with integrity and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. And so integrity is something that's formed primarily on the inside. It's not just about outward behaviour modification, although we need to modify our outward behaviour. Not just about outward speech. We know speech, the words come out of our heart. And so God wants to do something in our life on the inside that we're speaking the truth in our heart. We're agreeing with God. We're saying, yeah, this is right. The truth's always right. This is what you say, God. I'm in agreement with you. I'm not wrestling with you. And therefore, it puts a lot of temptation to the side because you're just, you're just not tempted. It's just like, Shh, don't agree, don't believe it. I believe what God says. Psalms 101 verse 2, I will walk within my house in the integrity of my heart. And so here's David. He says, I, I need to have integrity when I'm at home alone. I need to have integrity when I'm at home and there's nobody else watching me because I've seen people come out to church. I've seen people in a business context. I've seen people in public context. We see the politicians and they, they're saying the right words and they're doing some good actions and they're getting their photo taken doing this and that thing and, you know, hugging babies or whatever they're doing and, you know, uh, you know giving to, to uh, you know, um, you know, the needy and different things like that. But all the time behind the scenes and hidden in their heart and behind closed doors, they were somebody else. And David says, I'll walk within my house in the integrity of my heart. And so it's an inner issue of the heart. And David says, because something's happened in my heart, because God has helped me to have a pure heart, because God has enabled me to agree with him in my heart, therefore I can be the real deal at home. I can, I can live as a Christian when I'm at home and no one's there. And uh, if it doesn't work at home, you know, if my Christianity doesn't work at home, it, it means it doesn't work, it means it's broken. You know, whatever my Christianity is at home, that's what it really is. Because we can come to church and, uh, you know, we can uh, you know, put on something for others, uh, even for ourselves, we think, but uh, who we really are is who we really are in our heart who we really are in what we think, who we really are. We need God to help us, that we would love righteousness, that we would love what God's got for us. So let me close Proverbs 10, 9. People with integrity walk safely, but those who follow crooked paths will slip and fall. Proverbs eleven three: The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. And so both God and men will reward integrity. Yeah, the boss will reward integrity. People will acknowledge integrity. People that aren't Christians that hate your God and hate your Christianity, they, they will regard your integrity. And I've had people say, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe what you believe. I don't agree with what you believe. But, uh, but uh, you believe it and, and, and you're the real deal, you know. And, and, and you're living it and I don't agree with you. And they see that. There's something impressive about integrity. Nehemiah 7, 2, he speaks and he says, I put in charge of Jerusalem my brother Hanani, along with Hananiah, the commander of the citadel, because he was a man of integrity and feared God more than most men. As he observed this man's life, he feared God. What does that mean? He, he wanted to obey God more than most people. 
He wanted to be a man of integrity and do what was right. It was important to him on the inside. And Nehemiah saw that and said, man, he's the sort of guy I can promote. He's the guy I can put in charge of some stuff when I'm not there. And uh, God will promote, God will bless. And the Bible says in our text that God will bless even our children if we're walking in integrity. Praise God. Let's bow our heads before God. We don't want to send a confused message to people that know us. Aren't you supposed to be a Christian? We don't want to confuse our children. I'm not talking about perfection. I'm not talking about you never get anything wrong. But I'm talking about living a life of integrity by the Holy Ghost, that God helps us to be righteous, that we have the Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit that's not mixed, it's pure. It's not double. It's not duplicitous. There's, there's no hypocrisy in God. Everyone knew where they stood with Jesus and everyone should know where they stand with us. That we're kind and loving and gracious, but we stand for something. We believe something. We live something. We're living a life. We're walking in our home. We're walking in the job space. We're walking with family and friends. We're walking in the community with integrity in our life. And sometimes it's that that wins people. It's that that's attractive. It's that that draws people to our God. Because they see us living as genuine and real and honest ambassadors of Christ in the world. Very quickly before we move on, we need to get right with God this morning. Jesus is on the outside and he's knocking on the door to get on the inside. And you need to simply surrender and open the door to Jesus Christ this morning. That's you. You want to pray a prayer. You can lift your hand, anybody at all. Praise God. Can I encourage you about the life that you live? I'm the, it's, it's not about how rich you are. It's not about uh, how, many, how many people know you. It's, it's not about what the world thinks of you. It's what the people that really know who you are, the people that God brings you into contact with can see a genuine example of Jesus Christ in righteousness in your life. You know, you're not going to sell out for money. You're not going to sell out the truth. Oh, forget about the truth. Don't worry about the truth. Now that we'll stand for the truth, we'll stand for righteousness. It's a powerful, powerful testimony. The Apostle Paul stood before kings because he wouldn't back down on the truth. He stood for the truth. He spoke the truth. He was a man of integrity. And because of that, God promoted him. God used his life. And God is even still using his life. Ongoingly affecting us. A man of integrity. Hallelujah. What a great opportunity that we can walk a different walk. We can walk a different life. We can follow Christ or follow Paul as he follows Christ. We can follow Jesus Christ with our life and live a, a life that makes a difference to other people. Hallelujah. You're going to open up for prayer this morning. I'm going to invite you to come and spend some time. We've talked about honesty and truth and not being duplicitous but being as someone that has a strong moral principle that someone who loves righteousness and loves God's ways doesn't make compromise. I encourage you this morning, come and speak to God. Come and talk with him about your life. Commit yourself afresh, even if you've already done it. But God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live for you. I'm going to live your way. I'm going to walk in integrity, Lord God. I'm going to be a different person. I'm not going to carry different weights and measures and say a different thing depending on what group I'm with. I'm not just going to be a chameleon and change my conviction for you know uh, expedience sake or popularity's sake. I'm going to stand and uh, be who I really am and be a, a righteous person. To be pure, not mixed. To be single, not double. Wonderful God. Oh Lord, I give you praise this morning. God, I give you thanks this morning. Father, enable us, Lord God. God, through integrity, God. Through our convictions, God. Through our righteousness Lord God in the way that we walk, the way that we move in life God, the way that we operate Father that others would be drawn to you they'd see the example of Christ God, they'd see God that we are trustworthy people Lord God oh Father I pray God give us wisdom God God give us uh, God just uh, righteousness in the inner parts Lord God work in our heart Lord God who we are when we're alone Lord God Continue to work in us, God, and on us, God, in this regard, Lord God, in the life of 
take me, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Oh, it's something that we aspire to be like you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. You know, living a life of integrity, it's the best life that you can live. It's the best life you can aim for. It's the Christ-like life. It'll help you sleep at night. It'll take off some pressures and, and weights and burdens of trying to be everything for everyone. You just be who you are in Christ. You know, it makes life a little bit simpler. And you'll probably find that you actually really like yourself. This is the me I was meant to be. It was the me with Jesus at the helm. It was me with, uh, with, with him calling the shots and helping me. And uh, thank God for the presence and the goodness of our God. Hallelujah. And there's fruit to it that plays out in our influence upon other people, upon children, upon spiritual children. It uh, influences and affects other people. Thank God for his word this morning. Can you say amen? Thank God for his goodness. We're going to close off in prayer. Appreciate you coming out this morning. And uh, I'm going to get Josh to pray. Thanks, Josh. Father God, we do thank you for this message this morning. God, we thank you for your spirit in this place. God, I pray that you would continue to remind us, God, that we can live lives of integrity as we're empowered by your Holy Spirit to do so. God, I pray that you would seal this word in our hearts this morning and bring us back safely tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bless you today. Bless.